What's up guys? I'm back in the shop. It's time to tackle yet another mod for my truck and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I am really excited about this one because it is going to address my main complaint about my truck right now, which is that it is too fast. And by that I mean it crawls way too fast. When I get into any sort of rocky terrain that requires some technical lines or, you know, any sort of rock garden, um, I just have to thrash the thing. I can't go slow enough to have any sort of control. So I'm bouncing the truck over big rocks, I'm thrashing it, I'm beating it up. So far I've been lucky, I haven't broken a lot, but I don't expect that to continue. I really wanna crawl and I wanna crawl slow. So I'm gonna make that happen. And how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna run what's called a dual case setup. So Trail Gear offers this kit, which I'm showing you some of the larger parts, there's quite a few more. And this kit, allows you to take parts of a gear drive transfer case out of a Toyota pickup, which was the previous generation Toyota trucks. Here's a housing for a gear drive transfer case, or one of the housings, and here's a whole bunch of parts from it that I've already taken out, and it allows you to combine some of these old parts, some of these new parts, and create a crawl box that you can fit between your transmission and your chain drive Tacoma transfer case. And that's great. And a lot of people are satisfied right there, but I wanna go really slow. I don't wanna just go kinda slow. I don't want this thing to be kinda slow. I don't want it to be kind of a crawler. I want this thing to just be deathly slow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a set of these. These are Sumo Gear 4.7 transfer case gears. And the stock gear ratio out of a gear drive case from a pickup is 2.28 to one. Um, so this is over double that ratio. I'm gonna install these gears instead of the stock 2.27 gears, or 2.28 gears, and I'm gonna go really, really slow. Also, I'm gonna show you guys what it takes to convert a forward shift transfer case out of a pickup to a top shift transfer case, because a lot of the transfer cases you're gonna find on eBay are forward shift. Top shifts are very sought after, and I couldn't find one, actually. So I bought a forward shift case. Uh, you need a top shift case for this kit to work. Luckily, Trail Gear offers a kit for that as well. So this converts your forward shift case to your top shift case, so I'll show the install of those parts. And before I get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to Poly Performance, because they sell all these parts, and they are helping me out with this video. I am super psyched to be working with them and making this video, showcasing some of the parts that they sell. Huge shout out, huge thanks to them for supporting me. Anyway guys, this is gonna be awesome. We are going to rip apart the gear case. We are going to create the crawl box. We are going to install 4.7 gears. We're going to install a top shift kit. And then I'm gonna install it on the truck and we are gonna go wicked slow. So let's get started. Got a lot to do, let's dive in. Before I get started, I just wanted to say that this video is not intended to be a completely comprehensive, exhaustive guide to doing this dual case crawl box buildup. I do hope it provides a massive amount of detail to anyone attempting this build themselves, but I'm sure there are a couple steps that I either left out or abbreviated. Because of that, you should definitely refer to the instructions that Trail Gear provides on their website. They provide instructions for the top shift conversion, four seven gear installation, and the crawl box buildup. So you've really got everything you need. Below you will see a list of tools that you'll need for this job. Specialty tools include a welder and possibly a press if you consider that a specialty tool. But anyway guys, let's dig in. The very first thing I'm gonna do is strip down the old transfer case. And this, like I mentioned prior, is a geared transfer case out of a 90s pickup, a forward shift case and I'm just gonna take all the hardware out of it. As you can see, some of the hardware is a little bit frozen. This is an old case after all, so it needed a little hammering, but for the most part, the impact took care of it. The vast majority of these bolts are 14 millimeter. There's a few 12s thrown in there, but those two sizes should pretty much get the housings apart. And I'm just going around one by one, taking all these bolts out. There are also a lot of other little parts to remove, such as the bearing retainer clip here, and then the four wheel drive light switch, that can be taken out. And then we can also remove the speedometer sending unit. It just comes out pretty easily as such. And then the oil fill plug and the flanges can also be removed. Those have staked nuts that keep them on so you gotta pound the staking out and then the flange will come off. You can take that little piece of the housing off. There is the other flange removed. Then I started pulling the old outer housings off. Um, you can see some old gasket there, but they came off without too much of a fight. The oil galleys pull straight out of the housing like so. And then that gear set can be taken out just by hand. 
and the speedometer drive gear can be taken off. Next, I took the case to the shop because I was getting stopped by the snap rings. And there's a lot of snap rings in this case and need a good set of snap ring pliers to get them off. But remove those, remove the oil pump gear like so, and the bearing beneath it. Next up, I'm removing the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive shift rail. Just shift the case into two-wheel drive so that the roll pin is visible. Pound it out using a punch, and that will separate the fork from the rail. Then remove the detent ball by taking out this socket cap screw. There's actually one on each side. Just remove those screws, fish out the little springs that are inside, and then by tipping the case back and forth, the little detent balls will just roll right out. Easy work. And then after that, the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive shift rail will pull right out. To remove the high-low shift rail, shift it so that you can pound out the roll pin into the case, remove the rail. Don't worry, you're going to be able to fish out that roll pin once you crack open the case like this. I'm just using a little flathead screwdriver, a little bit of pressure to get that gasket to give way, and then the case cracks right open and you can fish out the roll pin. Then with just a little bit of coaxing with a rubber mallet, the input shaft and bearing can be removed as well as the idler shaft and bearing. And then, after collecting these parts, you have everything necessary to assemble the crawl box. Now because I'm installing four 7 gears into this crawl box, the housing from the Toyota gear case needs to be clearanced just a little bit to accept that bigger gear set. So here I am taking off a bit of material from the walls surrounding the counter shaft area, just using an angle grinder and a grinding wheel. And you want to constantly check to see if you have enough clearance and stop once you do. You also need to clearance each oil galley. Uh, take about an eighth of an inch from each of those bosses. I'm doing it here on a mill. You can use an angle grinder. I have access to a mill, so I'm going to use it for sure. And then, because this housing is so dirty right now, I decided to clean it up a bit in the sink at this point using a toothbrush and some Dawn dish soap. I think I used a brass wire brush as well. And once I was cleaning it up, I could see the casting's not super high quality, um, but I'll give Toyota a break on this one. They definitely made a lot of these things. All right, guys, it is finally time to actually start putting this crawl box together. Very first step is to slather the provided coupler with some grease right near the base of it and then install the cage bearing out of the old transfer case over top. Should slip right on there, especially with the grease. And then put some more grease on that cage bearing so that the installation of the low speed gear over top of it uh, goes smoothly. Here is the 4.7 low speed gear. Pay attention to the orientation when you put it on, but it should slip right over that cage bearing and spin very nicely. And then before you're done, you want to also install the provided spacer on top of that 4.7 low speed gear. Just set it right on top. Next up, I'm installing a couple of provided dowel pins into designated locations in the inner faceplate of the dual case adapter. I'm just using an arbor press here, putting them in the holes that they call out and pressing them in. It is definitely a tight fit, but that's how it should be. Uh, you could probably also do this with a C-clamp or even pound them in with a hammer. At this point, the low speed gear can be installed. Just hold the spacer on as you put the entire assembly into the ball bearing location, and then put your hand on the coupler, the base of it, and flip the entire thing over onto its back to install a provided snap ring. Now, I won't lie to you, this snap ring is very stiff, and I needed to break out the specialty snap ring tools, which has like a screw jack in it to spread the ring open. and. Uh, Using that, I could get it over the shaft and seat it, but yeah, that thing would have been burly with pliers, let me tell you. But once it's in there, the low speed assembly should be completely secured. Next, I started on the shifter assembly and I took the shift rail and provided shift fork over to the arbor press and pressed the rail into the fork itself. It's a very tight fit and the arbor press made it easy. I just pressed it far enough to align the roll pin and made sure the detent slots are on the correct side. Then I pounded in the roll pin just on a vise here. Uh, it goes in pretty easy once it's started. Just be careful and make sure it's fully seated. And at this point, you want to weld on a provided piece of keystock right on the forks. And this is so that the shifter rod cannot slip out of those forks and move side to side. You only want it moving forward and backwards. So you weld on that piece of keystock, grind it down, and then you also want to clearance the fork just a little bit for the 4.7 gear. So a whole bunch of work here to get the shift fork set up, but once it's good, it should slide right in like this over the coupler, and um, you're good to go. 
Now Sumo Gears provides its new gear set without the bearings installed, so that means you have to press them on yourself, which is completely fine as long as you have access to a press. I'm using a hydraulic press here and a little piece of pipe to press the bearings onto both the counter shaft and the input gear. And it should be obvious which goes to which. Uh, one will fit tightly, one will fit loosely on each. Just make sure you press them down so that they fully seat against the gear face and that the snap ring groove is in the correct orientation or farther from the gear face. Then and reinstall the shaft snap rings. These are a total hassle. I hate dealing with them, but they did go on with some coaxing. And uh, once you've done that, uh, the bearings are fully seated and retained, and you can install both the counter shaft and the input gear into the dual case adapter. Apply some grease to the needle bearing that's seated in the housing itself. Apply some grease to the counter shaft, and then kind of spin it in there. Should mesh really nicely and just slip right in almost like it was designed to fit right there. <laughs> and then uh, apply some grease to the pocket bearing out of the old transfer case. You gotta steal that from the old transfer case. Put it in the inner diameter of the coupler and then the input gear, uh, that polished end goes right into the pocket bearing and meshes nicely, just like that. And at this point, we can put the housing back together. To do this, I'm first installing five provided studs into the old transfer case housing with some blue Loctite. I'm just hand threading them in and then I got a set of vice grips on them and really tighten them down. And then I installed the provided interface gasket before I set the housing down on top of the gears. And once I did that and made sure the gasket was all lined up, I could thread the needle, place the housing over top of the two bearings and give it a few love taps and it all seated very nicely and it is ready to be bolted together for real. Now I forgot to film the process of actually bolting this thing together, but here is a quick look at all the provided nylon lock nuts installed, and then you also need to use two bolts from the previous transfer case assembly. Now I'm reinstalling the detent ball, the spring, and the socket cap screw with a little bit of Loctite, and I'm just gonna tighten that sucker in there, and then this thing should shift beautifully between high and low position. Now I'm installing the brand new snap rings that Sumo Gear provides on the input shaft and idler shaft, and then I'm installing the drain plug and fill plug into the dual case adapter. All right, and now it's finally time to get this thing shifting, so I'm gonna install the new top shifter by first putting down one of the provided gaskets and then installing the shift lever itself. You'll see on the interior side of the shift lever that one of the sides of that shift lever is milled out a little bit more and you want that side towards the shift rail. And then I'm just using four of the bolts from the previous transfer case assembly to fasten this thing down and we should be good to go. Now the very last step is to install the transmission side adapter plate. So first I'm laying down one of the provided gaskets. I was told either gasket would work in my application. And then just putting the plate on top of the gasket carefully and installing the hardware to clamp it down. Now unfortunately I'm showing you installation of the old hardware, but they do provide new hardware which you should absolutely use. I just wasn't thinking here. I ended up taking all these out and reinstalling new hardware. But guys, that's it. Let's check it out. Here it is, guys. Look at this thing. Oh man, looks awesome. I am so psyched to have this built up. I've been really impressed with the kit so far. The hardware is all of very high quality. It went together really easily. And the instructions, I would say, are sufficient. They're not amazingly detailed, but I'd say they're plenty good enough to get the job done because I did get the job done. And it's definitely not a hard job to do if you have the right tools. Let me give you guys a feel for the reduction it's capable of. So I'm in high range right now, and I'm just spinning the input. You can see I have a one-to-one -one input to output. And then if I shift it into low range, Look how slow that is. Those four sevens are doing work. Oh, man, I can't wait to feel what that actually feels like on the rocks. It's, it's going to totally be a game changer for this truck. I am so psyched. But guys, this is really only step one. There is a lot left to do. So I have to essentially get under the truck, take the stock transfer case off, um, probably put some hardware in that case and the transmission housing. I might need to trim the shift rail on my stock transfer case, not sure yet, we'll see. And then because I'm adding all this extra length behind the transmission, my stock drive shaft is not gonna work anymore. So I need a new drive shaft. And so I got a measure for that and I think I'm gonna order it. I'm 
contemplating going with a Tom Woods drive shaft just to get rid of that stupid carrier bearing. I hate that thing. Oh my God, what a stupid, stupid piece of hardware that is. So I'd really like to get rid of it and I might go with Tom Woods because of that. I also need a new front drive shaft um, after this goes in. And then I need to build a cross member that will interface with these mounting holes just because I don't really want to have all that suspended mass behind the transmission. Well, I can't have all that suspended mass behind the transmission and expect it to hold up. So I need a cross member that'll adapt to probably a stock pickup transfer case bracket with the bushings and everything. And uh, so that'll be a fun thing to build. And then I also need to do floorboard mods, which is made more complicated by the fact that I have bench seats. So. I'm pretty sure the shifter for this guy will end up somewhere where the bench is, unfortunately. So I'm taking the opportunity to get new seats. These things are shot. This truck is very uncomfortable to drive. I'm pretty easy going as far as seat quality. I really don't need anything fancy, but these are the worst seats I've ever had in a vehicle. They just suck and they hurt my back. <laughs> I can't wait to get rid of them. So I'm gonna get a couple of nice seats. I don't know what I'm gonna get yet, but not bench seats. So it'll clear up this tunnel and I can do floorboard mods to get this shifter back here and then the crawl box shifter somewhere in the middle. So gotta do that as well. And then there's probably a lot that I'm forgetting, but this has been a lot for one video. So I'm gonna cut it off here and uh, leave it as a part one and part two. The part one will be obviously the crawl box buildup. I think that's a good video in itself because I haven't seen something similar on YouTube yet. Uh, so I hope this is helpful. I hope you guys can follow along if you wanna tackle a similar project here and um, I hope you enjoyed watching because I think this is a super fun project. As you can tell, I'm really excited to finish it off. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Um, I'm sure there's plenty I didn't clarify. So if you have any questions and you're trying to tackle this yourself, I'm happy to help. So just let me know what your issue is and I will do my best to assist. And just as a fun exercise, I want you guys to comment below what my final output ratio to the wheels will be. And to give you a hint, this is a 99 Tacoma with a five-speed manual transmission, and my differentials are 430s. I think that should be all you need to know to calculate the output. It's pretty low, so let me know what it is, and uh, winner gets a high five. <laughs> and if you are psyched for the next part in this series, please subscribe because it will be coming soon. I cannot wait to get this under the truck, which means I am not slowing down, and uh, I'm gonna tackle the rest of this project in the very near term. I'm gonna go as fast as I physically can to get this thing ready to go and show you guys what this truck is truly capable of. So hit that subscribe so you don't miss it. Hit the like if you like the video, and guys, I will see you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.